Hello, I'm Caitlin Ruleen, social producer at Search Engine Journal, and this is SCJ News Live. I'm here every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern to give you the digital, or the highlights from the digital marketing news of the week. All of the articles covered during today's episode will be shared in the comments during and after the broadcast. Thank you, Danielle, for working in the comments today. So after you've done an SEO audit, what is the first thing that you tackle afterwards? We posed this question to our readers on social media this week with the options of technical, on-page SEO, off-page SEO, or a mix of everything. It was a close two-way race this week with 39% voting for technical, 34 for on-page SEO. A mix of everything followed that at 22%, and off-page SEO came in a very far last at just 5% of respondents choosing it. So what do you think? What do you tackle first after performing an SEO audit? Comment now and let us know. And now for your digital marketing news of the week. With over 600 million accelerated mobile pages spread across 700,000 unique domains, the AMP project is well on the way towards achieving its goal of united, uniting people around a common cause. That's no small feat since it requires the cooperation of millions of site owners dedicated to speeding up the mobile web. The Accelerated Mobile Pages project has made stri great strides in that regard, with some of the web's top publishers going AMP-friendly. Gizmodo is gaining new traffic thanks to AMP, with 80% of the site's AMP traffic coming from new visitors. Wired has seen a 25% increase in click-through rates from search results, and click-through rates from ads on AMP pages have gone up 63%. Slate has also seen an increase of 44% in monthly unique site visitors since going AMP friendly. Those are just a few of the statistics including it included in the year in review from Google's AMP project lead. Check out the full review. Danielle will post the link in the comments. Several SEO tools have been brought to WordPress.com's business plan, which will make it easier for users to optimize posts and pages for organic search traffic. WordPress.com's new SEO features are what you may expect while using an SEO plugin on the WordPress.org content management system. However, since WordPress.com doesn't, do, um, doesn't offer the ability to customize sites with widgets, there is, this is a welcome addition for our business users. Business users with a website hosted on WordPress.com finally have the ability to customize titles and meta descriptions. Additionally, a unique SEO feature now available on WordPress.com is the ability to preview how the page or post will look across a variety of networks before you publish. WordPress.com's new SEO features are available now to anyone with a business account. A detailed study released by Google reveals roughly 40% of people search only on a smartphone. More people, search via, more people are searching Google via smartphone than ever before the company says, with the most popular categories revolving around health, parenting, and beauty. On top of that, people who use their smartphones use them a lot, up to three hours a day. By comparison, an average of two hours a day are spent using desktop computers and 75 minutes is spent using tablets. Smartphone usage is said to be consistent throughout the day peaking at around noon and being used steadily through the afternoon and into the night. There's never really an off time, says Google. That's fairly solid evidence that we are living in a mobile first world now more than ever. Google warns marketers that if you're not making an attempt to reach customers on mobile, you're missing a quarter of your potential audience. Are you responding to your customers' tweets on Twitter? If not, you could be losing out on both revenue and loyalty. A new Twitter study examines three industries, airline, quick service restaurants, and telecoms, and they found that brands that were responsive to tweets from customers were more likely to see big benefits beyond just brand loyalty. The data showed that when businesses respond to customers via Twitter, those customers were 44% more likely to share that experience online and offline. Customers were also 30% more likely to recommend a business after receiving a response via Twitter. Twitter noted that companies were, that were able to respond the fastest to customers will see the greatest revenue impact. A patent granted to Google this week suggests that the company has future plans to track where you are at all times of the day. The patent, titled Systems and Methods for Generating a User Location History, goes a step beyond tracking your location via GPS coordinates. 
Google inspires to learn where you get your coffee in the morning, where you spend your lunch breaks, where you and your friends meet up after work for drinks, your favorite places to go to dinner, and so on. According to the patent application, using raw GPS data alone is not sufficient at determining a user's exact location. Google intends to identify the particular entity you have visited through collecting data through a variety of sources across multiple devices. So in addition to GPS location data, search history, emails, photographs taken, direction requests, social media posts, and receipts from mobile payments will also be used to determine the exact locations you've been to throughout the day. Ideally, Google wants to be able to map out a day in the life of its users, where they go, what time they get there, how long they stay, when they leave, etc. If you're not comfortable with Google collecting all of this data, you may have an option to opt out. However, in return for your data, you will receive a recorded history of your day-to-day -day life, broken down by time and location. This could be useful if you need to retrace your steps on a particular day. Should Google get a location wrong, you will have the option to correct and revise your location history. It's important to mention that not all patents go to market. Um, Google has been granted many patents throughout the years that have never seen the light of day, and this may just be another one to add to the list. On the other hand, if put into practice, it could end up leading to significant advances in local search, location-based marketing, geo-targeting, and more. We'll just have to wait and see what Google does with it. Google has acquired a company called Famebit in an effort to bring in more revenue to the online video community. The acquisition of Famebit, which describes itself as an influencer marketing platform for branded content, is said to increase the number of branded content opportunity for YouTube publishers. Since 2007, creators and advertisers have been able to earn revenue on YouTube through its partner program. You, uh, YouTube's partner program allows creators to monetize content in a number of ways. These include the pre-roll ads that you see before a video loads and the banner type ads that linger at the bottom of the screen. As brands continue to advertise on YouTube, they have started to reach out directly to creators with branded content opportunities. Going forward, and without going into too many specific details, Google claims that FameBits technology will create even more branded content opportunities and thus bring in more revenue. Following this acquisition, Google emphasizes that creators will always have the final say in how they work with brands. In related news, YouTube is giving brands a new way to ensure that they are being transparent to viewers about the paid content that appears on, their video, on the video sharing site. YouTube has announced that they are launching a new optional video feature that adds visible text on the video for the first few seconds of viewer watches, informing viewers of a paid promotion. Creators can also choose to add this text disclosure to any existing video without losing view count or other video metrics. You can add this text alert to your sponsored videos by selecting the optional video, con video contains paid promotion box. It will ultimately still be up to brands, businesses, and YouTube influencers to be honest and transparent about their collaborations. YouTube advises you to follow your country's disclosure rules and regulations. You can now convert colors from various web-based formats to another using a simple command in Google search results. The functionality drawing the most attention is the RGB to hex command, which has the potential to be a real asset to web designers and developers alike. You can drag the color slider or move the color picker to any color you wish. If you wish to convert a very specific color, enter the value into the search bar and Google will do the rest. The reverse also applies. You can enter the hex value into the Google search bar and it will be converted to RGB. While this tool serves a very niche audience, it is one, it is one more example of how Google is turning into a one-stop shop for everything search. With voter, reg with voter registration deadlines all around us, Google is dedicating prime real estate on its homepage, reminding people to register to vote in the U.S. general election. Google has made efforts in the past to encourage voter registration, but nothing to the extent of putting a pop-up right on their homepage. Google's pop-up reads, make sure you're registered to vote, with the options of no thanks or learn how. Clicking no thanks will dismiss the ad, while clicking learn how will direct you to voter registration information compiled by Google. For a company that has built a reputation on maintaining a clean and simple homepage, this is an unusual action for the search giant to take. 
However, Google is far from being the only tech company to encourage voter registration during this 2016 general election. And with that, I'll leave you for today. Tune in every Friday on Facebook at 3 p.m. Eastern for our look at the digital marketing news of the week. Or you can make it even easier by subscribing to our live notifications. As soon as this broadcast ends, click the live notification button and it'll let you know the next time that we start a live broadcast. If you're watching this after we record, uh, click the arrow in the top right corner of this box and you can um, subscribe there too. Thanks for joining me and have a great weekend.